Raised outside of Chicago, Dustin the Cow Header worked hard to make his way into film and documentary work. Shooting for the stars, he's worked with some of the biggest names from Dwayne Wade to Jay-Z to Chance the Rapper. And now, one of his films, Shot in the Dark, has aired on national television. Dustin joins us now on Night Talks. Good evening, Dustin. How's it going? <laughs> it's going good. Okay, so tell me how you kept your team's momentum going. Um, while we were making the movie, we kind of made the commitment early on to know that we were going to be following the main kid for his last two years of high school. So um, there was never any question about ever stopping that. Uh, the framing of the story was so different, I think, when we first started because I had made the short film and I had met these two kids, um, Taekwon, the main kid, and then yeah. Marquise, the, uh, his teammate. And every time I go home to Chicago, I kind of keep up with them and check in on them and, and try and do it. And in the back of my mind, I was like, I want to make this into a, a full length movie, but I hadn't done it. I had just made the short film. Yeah. And then uh, in December of 2012, Mar or sorry, no, August of 2012, Marquise got arrested and he was on the front cover of the Tribune. And that was sort of my call to action moment when it was like, all right, guys, like, if we want to make this movie, we got to go make it. And so initially I thought the film was going to be about this kid goes to jail, he comes out, the team's super happy because he's out, and then they go off and win the championship, and yeah. it's the happily ever after story. Uh, you guys can watch it and find out if that actually happens, but it doesn't. <laughs> and, you know, the reality of it is much more complicated and nuanced. Um, but point being is that that was the framework we were working within, is we knew this... This one kid was in jail, and now the main kid we were following, Taekwon, he was going to have to step up and be a, a bigger leader for the team, and that felt dramatic and something worth filming. But we were always going to follow him to the end of high school. So in terms of momentum, the energy we all had was to know that we were going to be following this journey for at least two years through high school. So uh, there was never any question that we would or would not do that. Okay. I want to backtrack a tiny, tiny bit. Mm -hmm. How exactly did you find the school and the, and the players? Yeah, uh, it's an interesting story because the team that I worked with, the ma it, our team was really big, but at the beginning our core team was myself, the cinematographer Ben Vogel, and then the producer Daniel Poneman. That was sort of like our first team. It was just the three of us. We, all three of us went to the same high school, Evanston High School, in, right outside of Chicago. And uh, Ben went to art school at SCAD. I went to NYU. We knew of each other. We had worked together a little bit, but we hadn't really committed to working with each other. And then Daniel, the producer, was not a filmmaker at all. He was actually a basketball scout. And yeah. so his story is, is wild. And you can look, he's had articles written about him in Sports Illustrated and the New York Times, but he was dubbed the Boy Scout yeah. because he was about 15 years old and not to get nitty gritty into basketball, but he was 15 years old when Derrick Rose was a senior in high school. And so he kind of fell into the Chicago basketball world right. as a scout, but as a teenager. Most of the scouts are super old, like old school guys that have all these old connections. And it's like, I don't know, it's got kind of a stale world in a way. And he was super young and he just connected with all these kids and made friends with them and started helping them get to colleges. And there's all this kind of like shady stuff that happens with kids trying to go to these colleges but he was very pure and his morals were really clean and so he had this really honest connection with these different kids yeah. and so he did this for years and he would facilitate all of these different kids from the city and the suburbs of Chicago going off to college and getting scholarships yeah. and he just he was he was one of the best at it he was he put again not to do nitty gritty basketball but he you know he discovered Anthony Davis oh that's big yeah. that's a big deal he had put Jabari Parker in his first all-star game in eighth grade, like all these guys that have gone on to have amazing careers in the NCAA and the NBA, he was early on with all of them. So um, when we, when I knew that I was going to try and make this movie, it was around all the Anthony Davis stuff had gone on. Um, so his, you know, his profile was pretty big, but also I knew this kid. We went to high school together. We'd yeah. known each other for years and years. And so I reached out to him thinking that I wanted to do a documentary about Jabari Parker. And he was like, eh, Jabari, like, he's going to go to Mormon camp this summer. I don't know if we'll be able to get him. Like, who knows? And so he was like, what about these other kids? And he sent me a list of a bunch of other players. And for whatever reason, I, we, we still talk about it to this day. We don't know why, but Taekwon, the kid, the star of Shot in the Dark, was the first one on that list. Yeah. And we found the original email where he sent it to me. And I don't know. It just, like, 
he just sort of leapt off. He was re relatively unknown. Um, he wasn't as, like I knew about Jabari Parker and I was in New York, whereas I had never heard of this kid Taekwon. So he's sort of unknown at a program that was not well heralded or right. big in the city. Exactly. Um, but was in a intense neighborhood, in a challenging neighborhood, but also like they were doing something there that was super special and it was at its early stages. So it felt like a really special time and place to kind of be there with him. And so uh, I that so that was the short film. So we filmed with him as the kind of David and then the Goliath. Uh, the, it, this is the short film, which yeah. is I think still on YouTube. It's called Ball So Hard. Um, because everything had to have a Jay-Z title yeah. back then. <laughs> and really, like, actually, we had all of our titles of our projects had to be Jay-Z songs, <laughs> um, or s lyrics, I mean. Anyway, so the, the short documentary was about Taekwon as sort of the David, and then we had Jaleel Okafor and his teammate Paul White, who both went on to play D1, and Jaleel plays for the Pelicans now. Um, but they were at Whitney Young, which is the high school where uh, Michelle Obama went to. Yeah. Um, so it's a really, it's one of the best public schools in the city. It's a big magnet, yeah. but it's like maybe three miles away from the school that Taekwon goes to, but it's basically like two different worlds. Right. Um, so it was imp we wanted to do something that contrasted the sort of the haves and the have nots of the yeah. city. Yeah. Um, and so that was sort of our starting point. And then I thought when I made the feature length movie, it would continue to kind of be this David and Goliath thing yeah. where we'd have the the kids at Orr in the more challenging school and then the kids at, you know, the Obama alma, alma mater. But once we kind of committed to shooting with Orr, the, the fancier high school wanted nothing to do with us. They're like, you guys made your choice. Like, we don't want you to film. So we just sort of fully committed to uh, filming at Orr. Or. And yeah, we were, it was all, there's no hard feelings. It was all for the better.